All right, so the Colorado Avalanche are not done wheeling and dealing. This time, maybe a little bit of a surprise. Alex Newhook gets sent to the Montreal Canadiens for two draft picks in this year's draft, a first and a very early second. But do they keep them is the question. A lot to get to on today's episode of Locked on Avalanche. Your Locked on Avalanche, your daily podcast on the Colorado Avalanche. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. All right, everybody, welcome to the Locked On Avalanche Podcast. We're part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Thank you for tuning in and making it your first listen of the day. That's always appreciated. I'm Chris Maselli. With me, as always, Mr. Shaggy Von Doom, Kyle Sullivan. Make sure to follow us on our social media outlets, LOPN underscore Avalanche. On Twitter, Locked On Avalanche on Instagram. Questions, comments, concerns, and opinions, Locked On Avalanche at gmail.com. Follow us on our YouTube channel over on YouTube. Hit subscribe, get notified when a new show goes live, and definitely subscribe to our subtext. Some good conversation going on over there. Link to that is in the show notes below. Subscribe and chat with Kyle and I on all of these topics one on one. All right, you see on our uh, rundown over on YouTube. We will get to the Evan Rodriguez season grade, which we typically do in the second segment. It's getting pushed down to the third segment today because of this trade. This is We're going to talk about this in two uh, segments here between uh, the trade between Colorado and Montreal. The Avalanche send Alex Newhook to Montreal. Montreal sends to Colorado two draft picks. Uh, they had the 31st pick in the first round, which goes to the Avalanche. And they also get the 37th pick in the second round, which is the fifth pick of the second round. Uh, and they also get Gianni Fairbrother. And God, how I want that jersey already. Oh, yeah, that's going to be a good one. Uh, <laughs> if he even ever plays, it's kind of, you know, he's in the last year of his CLC. Who knows what's going to happen with him? But he is included in the deal. Uh, but the the big parts here are clearly Alex Newhook and clearly those picks. We'll get to those picks in the second segment. We're going to start with Alex Newhook. His time with the Avalanche is over. Uh, if you're an everydayer and you listen to this show, we maybe me more than Kyle like supported him and backed him, was not happy with the season that he had. I think we both gave him D pluses for his season grade, but I was, I was of the, the camp where I was not giving up on him. He's young. Uh, he still is growing and he's still uh, growing his game and knowing that the avalanche, what they, you know, they've done in the past is be, be very patient with their prospects, especially their first round prospects. I didn't see this coming this year. We said many times, like th th they they probably give him a bridge deal because he was he's up for a contract. They probably give him a bridge deal at the end of that bridge deal, or maybe going into the last year of the bridge deal, and he's not performing well. Maybe that's when they trade him. I didn't think this was going to happen now, but I'll uh, get your thoughts, and on the other end, I'll say why I'm okay with this too, and on the same breath. Go ahead. Yeah, every time we had this conversation about New Hook in this in the next deal, uh, I do you remember I'd always say if they do, and you always would like ah, they're not going to get rid of him this early. There's this thing that we forget about when it comes to the NHL, the Colorado Avalanche. These players are getting paid. This is a business, and when, if this is the job if let's just say this is your job and you are given every opportunity hey we're setting you out on your own this is your job and you can't do it and you get demoted right. and then you get demoted again when it comes back around do you really want to re-up with that employee you have to look at it like a business and chris you mentioned at the beginning we both support alex newhook we know the potential he has but last year, Bednar was vocal about this opportunity. Right. And everybody points out where he ended out the year. And do you want to do this again? And we talk about the roster, what it's going to look like. Did uh, it, it clearly looks like the Avalanche just did not want to keep experimenting and then it not coming to fruition. Well, He's I had, 
he's had 66 points in his entire career. Mm-hmm. He's had he played all 82 games. Right. And and I just feel like the, the what you said about Bednar, well, what Bednar said about him, um, to go from that to this in a calendar year is is surprising to me. I, and and it, you know, it's just because he he had uh I say a down year, it was just the expectation for him was to do a lot better than he actually did. And 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 to tell him like you're gonna be running, you know, the second line center until the trade deadline. Um, and obviously that didn't pan out. And to be gone uh, is a little bit shocking because if you felt like he was going to be the second line center going into this season for or last season for him, then you clearly have expectations for him. He didn't meet them this last year. I just assumed like they were just going to keep working with him because that's the expectation for him was to be the second line center. Didn't happen for this year. But clearly they want him to be that so they would continue to work with him. Well, r- real quick, do you remember where he started the year before? W- with the Eagles. <laughs> it's because yeah. he had this same expectation. We're acting like last year was his one and only chance. No, this was the the second chance. Mm-hmm. He went down to Colorado to refine some things because Bednar, because he came off a really, he was looking, he had sh- he showed promise three years ago like right. this this could be something potential and saw something in preseason and training camp where bednar is like no he's starting with the eagles because he still needs refinement he just doesn't have it right now and then we kind of forgot about that because we won the cup and all that beautiful stuff all the small things all that stuff and then tw- last year happened mm-hmm. and it's that wasn't just the one instance this is over the period of time and it had to happen. Do you do this again next year? Mm-hmm. And then you're you're potentially paying him more money. It's I I understand why the Avs did this. And when it comes to what they got in return, I don't I don't hate this yeah. because and, you're you're taking another gamble in the future. And we'll talk about what they got in, in the return, you know, next. But I, I think uh, you know part of the re- and I alluded to it was. Part of the reason why I th- didn't think he was going anywhere is because the Avs have shown they're patient with prospects and first round picks. But I also think they've learned from that mm-hmm. and to maybe not do that all the time because look what they did when they did that with um, Martin Kaut yep. and Tyson Jost. Yep. And they and and look at the return they got from them when they played that tape to the end. And now what you're getting in return is not what you could get for a first round pick if you do a deal like this now. So I, I it, you know, I was going off of the history and the track record of what the Avalanche do with these picks. And, you know, they're in the, the mindset of like, well, we tried it twice with, with at least these two guys and Martin Cow and, and Tyson Jost. And you're not getting a first and an early second for Tyson Jost or Martin Cow at that stage in the career. And the Avalanche needed to do this <clears throat> because they need draft picks to play with. If they want to draft, I, I think a lot of people are thinking that they're not going to do that. We'll talk about that next. But they, I kind of feel like, yeah, it, it, when they took a step back and looked at Alex Newhook, like you said, his first season didn't even make the squad in the beginning. He went, he went down to the Eagles. Second season, given the keys to the second line center, by the end of the year, he was centering the fourth line. Um, and I think they, even though that's a really small sample size and he still could be a very productive player for a team, I think they looked at it and said, even though this is a small sample size, we need to make a move now if we want to take what we can get from him and put it into the team that's worth something now. So in that aspect, I don't think it's a terrible move to do it. And the thing that nobody's talking about, this also shakes the mentality up in Loveland. They have a brand new head coach, and now Alex Newhook is gone. Not too far away from Sampo Ranta leaving. So we're, we're done with the days of constantly seeing like Sheldon Dries and Mark Alt every preseason. <laughs> like, oh, oh man, I, he's out there i can't i haven't seen him since last preseason no those days are done it shakes up that mentality in loveland like 
we have to get serious when they call us up here there's a there's a role we're not going to just live in the minors we're going to be dealt so it kind of lights a fire under the eagles a little bit well not only that um you know now the avalanche now they have another roster spot that they have to fill you know like he he was going to be a roster spot whether or not you liked how he was playing and and you know uh whether he, he was meeting expectations or not which he wasn't but you kind of felt like okay like another year under his belt maybe next year he can step it up a little bit more take that next step um the fact of the matter is now they have to fill another spot so what do they do here you now you have you went from one first round pick you went from one pick in the first four rounds because you're not picking again until the fifth round and now you have three picks within 10 picks because you're picking 27 and that that second rounder you got is 37. So you're now picking three times in a very short order. But are they going to keep them is the question. And we'll get to that right after we hear from – oh, let me bring it up. We got FanDuel here, and it just went away from me. There it is, FanDuel. All right, uh, take your first swing at betting – Major League Baseball on FanDuel and get 10 times your first bet amount in bonus bets up to $200. That's right. Just bet $20 and you'll land $200 in bonus bets. And that's win or lose, folks. And if it's me, it's probably lose. (laughs) Uh, $200 you can spend on everything from the money line to the over and under to who you think is going to hit the first home run all on an app that's safe, secure, and super easy to use. Plus, when you win, you get paid instantly. There's no better place to bet on Major League Baseball than FanDuel, America's number one sports book. So sign up today and visit FanDuel.com slash locked on to get up to $200 in bonus bets. That's FanDuel.com slash locked on. FanDuel is the official partner of Major League Baseball. All right. Now the Avalanche have three picks. The Avalanche prospect pool is pretty thin. We've talked about that in the past. Um, We talked about the possibility of the Avalanche trading down in this draft to maybe try uh, try to acquire an extra pick. And maybe you, you drop out of the first round, but you maybe somehow get two second round picks. And we had Hattie Kalakashan, who's our NHL guru. Um, and he, he says there is a ton of first round potential in this draft. So falling back, depending on where you land, isn't the worst idea. That was maybe something that the Avalanche were thinking about doing. Now, you don't give up that first round pick and you inherit two more. And the two that you get, like I said in the beginning, is number 31 and number 37, which is essentially like another first round pick. If we're listening to Hattie and... Uh, you know, he's saying 45 to 50, maybe even a little bit more could be first round picks in this draft. You potentially can get three, three prospects that could be very crucial to you down the road, obviously, a few years down the road. But do the Avalanche do that or do they package these together and go get more of an immediate need when what you let go? Let's face it. Alex Newhook was somebody that was playing for you now. So do you keep all of these? Do you get rid of one of them? Do you get, I don't think you get rid of all three, (laughs) but do you get rid of one? Do you get rid of two? Do you get rid of none? The Avalanche have a lot of options here and it's going to be a really interesting next 48 hours, 72 hours for them. I love these moves and stepping back just a little bit, like, this is exactly what we wanted on McFarland Sackett combo going into this offseason. And it's yeah. it's absolutely wonderful as an Avalanche fan. So if I was Chris McFarland walking into that draft, I'm kind of, you know, flexing my draft picks and saying, hey, look at what we got over here. I mm-hmm. would not use them personally. I would package them. You see what some <laughs> yeah. of these you yeah. would like, what was it? Uh I think it was Kevin Hayes. Did he just go for a six? round picks picks. yeah but i mean that's what the market is now like those teams that really want those picks are offloading they're offloading players for like you're sitting in a really good spot i would package that up you talked about an immediate need 
that's exactly what you want to you just got them just package them away you yeah have you a, don't you don't need to package both of them man no like, no, no, you, no you can no. you can have you know you have two first round picks you can get rid of that second first round pick for uh, first round picks are gold yes gold you you can get you can get a a immediate impact player with one pick so you don't have to go crazy and package all these things together if you know you, you feel you can, like you can just get a guy with one pick and you have that fifth sixth and seventh as well you could take the second and the sixth and say here you go let me have and there's your immediate need like we talked about the cap constraints the avalanche are facing going into this off season, mm-hmm. they just bought themselves a little bit of funny money with these picks. Yeah. I would, I would love to see them keep two of them. I really would <clears throat> because you, you can, like you were saying you can get uh, a player that has a lot of value uh, with one of those two first round picks. I would like to yeah. see them keep 27 just because yeah. that's their pick. It's a little bit higher than 31, obviously. But 31 has value, mm-hmm. especially in this draft. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, I think you can you can get rid of that, bring in somebody. It's tough to know right now who that could be. You really don't know. But with what's going on, like you were saying, like, you know, you could bring in a, a, a guy that helps you now, this mm-hmm. year. Um, Honestly, like it, the, the, the crazy part of me would love to see them keep all three just because I love drafts <laughs> and I love like picking prospects and I love like getting like these guys that you just watch like materialize and and, and grow and then all three of them would come into the league together. You know, like I don't think that's going to happen. I, there is at least one trade happening here um, and maybe, maybe two, but maybe – if the if there's if there is a player in this draft the Avalanche really really like, and they need to jump into the late teens to go do that, now they have that option too. That's not yes. helping you right away, but instead of two or three years down the road, maybe it's one year down the road. If it's someone in the fifteen to nineteen range, you could package a couple, you know, late round, first round, early second round picks, and do that. So this is what the Avalanche have created for themselves overnight that they just had one late first round pick. And now you have all of these options open to you. You can move up in the draft if you want to. You still could move down if you wanted to. You can still do that. Or you can go get a player that's that's a veteran that's been playing for a while that you can bring in and help you right away. And in some, you know, Neverland world, all of those things happen. Yeah, <laughs> they get pro- they get prospects and they trade and bring a guy in. And they it's it, it's a gluttony of riches right now for the Avalanche. You have to love what's going to happen Wednesday night. It's 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 going to be must watch TV for the Avalanche because they're going to make a move. If they stand pat, I will be shocked. If they stand pat yeah. and do nothing and pick three prospects, I will genuinely be be surprised. I won't hate it. Because I, like I said, I love the draft, uh, but I will be surprised if they don't go do something else. Because what the Avalanche are going to be doing right now, regardless of when you're listening or watching this episode, on Wednesday, the difference between pick 27 and pick 31, the Avalanche have to determine what is there, if there is any drop in quality of talent that we will be acquiring. And those picks are going to get. They're Not they're really, going man. to get hotter and hotter yeah. to closer to that draft. And when that first team, being Chicago, picks Connor Bedard, do other general managers start sweating and saying, you know what? Maybe we need to jump up. Maybe this is it. And then McFarland just leans back, waves that 27 or 31 and say, Hey, right here. Yeah. And then you make your moves <clears throat> when that draft begins, when the clock is ticking. The Avalanche are in a good spot. And that value is continuing to rise all day long. Yeah. Um, and, you know, there, the, the, kind of a topic a lot of people are throwing around is, well, the money that could have gone to Alex Newhook, where does that go? And we're, we're assuming Newhook was going to be in the one and a half on the low end, two to two, two and a half on the very high end. I think he's in that two range. Um, 
does that help them keep someone like JT Comfort? I, I, to me, no. I, I don't. I don't see that because I don't think JT Comfort is worth two million dollars more than what he was already making. So I don't. I'm not going down that route. But it does free up some money to go get somebody. Sure. I don't like. I I, I know the. I I hear the Avalanche are talking with Comfort, and I feel like they do want to bring him back. Yeah. But this is this is you know. Uh, Philip Grubauer 2.0, like they are not going to overpay for him. Philip Grubauer and Darcy Kemper. So maybe this is those guys 3.0. Um, they have a number. They're not going to go over it with JT Comfort. And I don't think they're going to get sucked in because they've had him on the team. I don't think they're going to get sucked into the last season that he had and be totally enamored with that season while other teams will. Uh, so I, I don't know. I don't feel like the money that they, in a sense, saved from Alex Newhook goes to JT Confer because I'm not 100% sold the Avalanche really want to bring him back. I feel like they do because he's a part of the franchise, but they are absolutely not going to overpay for him. They can go get Alex Galchenyuk since Nashville doesn't want to. <laughs> they could. They could. Imagine that. Just bring him back just to punch <laughs> it in the face and just say, you literally just took half of his salary and just gave him to us. That'd be kind of funny. So, um, again, this is going to be fun. Um, where we're going to go from here is get to, uh, another season grade. We only have a couple more to go. Uh, we have Evan Rodriguez right now, and I think Devon Taves, and that's it for roster players. We also will do Jared Bednar and, uh, Chris McFarland and Joe Sackick to round out these season grades. Uh, but we are going to bring up Mr. Evan Rodriguez right now. There it is. You got B's across the board, essentially. I went with a B minus. Everybody else went with a B. Um, he is, uh, we're talking everything that we're talking about in, in this episode. And uh, could the money go towards him? Mm. I would put the money towards him before JT Comfort. That's mm. just me. Uh, but I really liked what Evan Rodriguez did last year. Moments where he had a, a pretty big uh, disappearing act, especially in the month of February. He had a single assist in the entire month of February. And that was it. And it was like the third to last game in the month. So uh, get rid of that. Just give me some points here and there throughout that month. You're probably at like a B, B plus for me. Yeah. Um, but he had 44 points total. Again, that's including the uh, the playoffs. He had 39 in the regular season. Um, but I, I, I thought... I thought he was a great fit for this team. It took him a little while to get going. Um, but once he did, and once he got comfortable, fit right in. So I love everything he brings <laughs> to this team. I really, I really hope that they they re-sign him and give him a you know a few year deal that doesn't break the bank. And uh now that he's got one year under his belt with this team, you love to see what he could do if he comes back for a second year. He's a spark plug. He really is when he's comfortable yeah. and when the- the moment gets too big for him. He has no problem disappearing. But I feel like it's one of those. Well, we were talking about JT Comfort. I'm not paying four million or four and a half for JT. I'd pay four for JT Comfort, but five, four and a half at the very top. Very no big. way, no how. But Erod mm. with a second go round with this team, some familiarity. That is something I like. I like the idea of that because we've seen year in, year out of JT Comfer. We have that sample size. I get it. Mm-hmm. Erod has potential, and I like when he's on the ice. And he's he's just a grit, grindy player. He's really, really good, and he's always got such a good attitude. Like we always talked about Darcy Kemper, always having like he's just a a happy guy. Mm. We can talk about that with Erod. He's always just. Sold yeah. out for the team, and the team really enjoys him. This is a player I like to see back. And last year, I felt like that was everything I we wanted and more. When that signing happened, we were so excited to see what he could do and like the possibilities of what he could be as a member of the Colorado Avalanche. And I feel like he lived up to that hype. Yeah, he's kind of he kind of reminds me of a little bit lesser Andre Burakovsky. Like he's he's yeah. really streaky. Yeah. Um when when he's on, like he's pretty dangerous. 
Um, and then when he goes kind of in these invisible modes, it takes him a little while to break out of those. And I bring up February. February was just horrible for him. Um, he had he only had five multi-point games during the regular season. And when you are playing most of your games uh, in the top six, especially with all the injuries that the Avs had, he was up there all the time. You, I mean, I just thought maybe you'd have – we, we, who were you saying that you just want him to have that breakout game? Like you, you always want Arturi Lekkinen to have that. Holy crap! Look at that! Look what he did game. Um, and Rodriguez seems like like he he's noticeable on the ice when he's having those good games. It doesn't really necessarily translate into points all the time, but when it does, it's pretty. Yeah, it's really pretty. So that last year in Pittsburgh that he had had a fantastic year, and I think that just shows you when he gets comfortable, what he can do. So that's why I would love for the Avalanche to bring him back because he did. Once he settled in, he got – it It was it was good. And then something happened in, in the month of February where – which is odd because the Avs, that's when they started to play better. Was – you know, they, they – the Avs as a team hit their wall uh, Christmas, New Year, when yeah. you know, when they had that seven, eight-game losing streak – um, and then they started to come out of that in like mid January and they started playing a lot better. Rodriguez, that's when he played his worst. So, so that didn't really make much sense to me, but, um, no, overall it was a great pickup. I loved when the, uh, he was one of the guys I was hoping that they would sign early on. And then the whole cadre thing just kept getting drawn out and drawn out and drawn out. Finally, he signs with Calgary and it was almost like they have to go get Evan, right? He's the best player left on the market. Um, I don't know why nobody's signing him. And then they gave him a very team friendly one year deal for not a lot of money. And I think he definitely outplayed that. So now the Avs have to pony up a little bit more. It's not nothing that's going to, you know, go break the bank on them. But when the cap space is tight, uh, you got to pinch every penny. So, uh, I, I think they definitely want him back. I think he wants to be back and I would love to see this get done quickly very quickly i'd love it especially you <clears throat> you would like to see this get done really quick after the draft because everybody who feels like they took a swing and missed when it came to the draft or what they had ideas for with wheeling and dealing picks they're going to overpay for somebody like erod especially for what he put up last year with the avalanche so you want the avs to bring him back in because the potential of erod and Rijo. let's go it's a good <laughs> one Sign me up. That's a good one. Um, what did he have that last year in pit? He had 43 points. So he dipped a little bit, but he was close. I mean, 43 and you know, 39 in the regular season for the Avs. Um, and and that's the first season with the Avs. You know what I mean? So it seems like once he gets comfortable is when he starts playing better. And Buffalo, first couple seasons, nothing. And then he had 25 points in 29. Um, and then he got traded to Pittsburgh and then his last year at Pittsburgh had 43 and he's already at 39 points in the first year with the abs. So bring him back in. Like you said, if he, if he goes on a line with uh, uh, Johansson, that's a, that's a plus just seems like everything would be trending up for Evan Rodriguez to have a really good season. If he sticks around, which I think everybody wants him to. So, And I think he's at a point in his career where I think he's getting tired of the traveling around. And going around and yeah. trying to find a place. Sure. And I feel like Colorado is a place that he can really just put some roots and be a good member of the team. Yeah, could be. We shall see. But uh, tonight is the draft. So we will see what the Avalanche do. And we will be recording right after that first round is over. Um, and... <laughs> Strap in, people, because I think it's going to be a very eventful uh, first round, especially for the Colorado Avalanche. It's going to be an exciting one. So it's going to be a crazy day leading up to it. So good day, good day. It's going to be one of them days. Very much so. All right, that's going to wrap it up for today. Uh, thank you for tuning in and making it your first listen of the day. That is always appreciated. He is Mr. Shaggy Von Doom, Kyle Sullivan, and I am Chris Maselli. This is the Locked On Avalanche Podcast. Enjoy the draft, and we'll see you guys tomorrow.